Weirs, and how are you all? Today we are to going to talk about realistic fictions and today's topic and today's lesson in English world. And uh, we're going to start with the definition of realistic fiction. So let's go ahead. Realistic fiction is a genre which consists of stories which could have occurred to people or animals in a believable settings. So this is the definition of realistic fictions which says like it's a genre which consists of stories which could have occurred to people or animals in a believable setting. So we'll go ahead and look at the characteristics of realistic fiction which is realistic fiction and realistic fiction stories tend to play, take place in, in the present or recent past. There is resemblance to real life. Fictional characters within the stories need react similarly to real life. There is an everyday language use. The plot contains conflict or tension as well as resolution. Narrative structure is presented in a time-ordered sequence. Stories depict our world and our society. So what it says here is, realistic fiction stories takes place in present or recent past. The re those stories which are called realistic fiction can take place in the present or the recent past. There is also a resemblance to real life because they they occurred to it's in a believable setting or it can occur to animal or people. So where where, where it will occur in a real life. So there will be a resemblance to the real life. Fictional characters within the stories react similarly to real life, like everyday life. We eat, we sleep, we go to school. So whatever we do every day, they do that, the same thing. There is an everyday language use. There is no any special language. Everyday, regular language we use in everyday with our friends and with our family. So that is the language they use in that realistic fiction. And the plot contains conflict or tension as well as a resolution. You will see a, there is a problem in the plot, there is a conflict or it, there is a tension, as well as by the end there will be a resolution to that conflict or that tension which was occurred in the plot. Then there is a narrative structure which is presented in a time ordered sequence. You will see like there is this the narrative structure is in a sequence. What comes first and then the second, the third and the last. The stories depict our world and our society. These stories have some message for us and for our society. So it basically it is based on our society and worldly affairs. Then we're gonna come uh, towards elements of poem and we will talk about what is poetry first. So the literary work, which is expression of feeling and ideas is giving intensity by the use of distinctive style and rhythm. This is the definition of poetry because we're going to do the elements of poem. So first we should know what is poetry. So the literary work, any work of literature, we call it literary work. So in that literary work, the expression of feeling, the way you express the feeling and ideas which has been given the intensity by the use of distinctive style and rhythm is called poetry. So the elements of poems are, poem is, are stanza, rhyme, rhythm. So we're going to look at them one, one by one. First, we're going to start with the stanza. It has fixed number of lines and has a rhyming pattern which repeats with each new stanza and it is not, not more than 12 lines. So guys, you have seen maybe some poems and you have read poems in your life, um, in your school, in your college, in your university. So they have, the, the stanzas have the fixed number of lines. You will see the fixed number and has a rhyming pattern. And you will see the pattern by the end of the, the, the um, I mean the stanza there is a rhyming pattern and it repeats in each stanza in each new stanza it will be there so the stanza is not more than 12 lines and if we talk about rhyme so the, it is a pattern of words that contain similar sounds which share ending sounds 
like bike these are the examples like if you see the upper upper stanza it will has like and then in the bottom stanza it has bike so the pattern of words has similar sounds like bike and it's it also shares the sound so the like and bike has similar sounds rhythm rhythm refers to the musical beat of a word or phrase the way the syllable in the word are stressed or unstressed. Like in normal language, everyday language use, we use some stress. We give stress to the words to make emphasis to something. Same way, we have musical beat or which gives the emphasis on the word or phrase. The way the syllable in the word are stressed or unstressed. So this beat this rhythm this gives the stress or unstressed kind of uh, um, structure in the musical way and it is called rhythm so we're gonna move towards the literary devices and poems if we talk about um, uh, metaphor simile simile imagery personification and repetition um, there are many, but we are going to talk about main important um, literary devices and poems, metaphor, simile, imagery, personification, and reputation. So let's move on to metaphor. Metaphor. It is a hidden comparison between two things which are unrelated but share some common characteristics. What is metaphor? It is a hidden comparison. You cannot see it. It is not obvious in the poem. But between it is between two things which are unrelated but share some common characteristics the examples are my friend is a black sheep of the family she is an angel so you see how it is the comparison they are not saying like she is innocent she is like you can take out the meaning out of an angel you it is not mention directly what she is it is hidden she is an angel maybe she is an innocent maybe she is very beautiful you understand so my friend is a black sheep of the family so they hide the meaning under these words so they, this is the um comparison between two family uh, two things my friend is a black sheep of the family and there is another example she is an angel what is simile simile is a figure of a speech which involves the comparison of one thing with another thing of a different kind so what we are doing here it is a comparison of one thing with another thing it's a simple comparison we are comparing one thing with another thing of different kind so the other thing would be a different kind for example as brave as a line my brother is as brave as a lion so i'm comparing my brother with another thing which is a lion like my brother is brave as a lion he is as cunning as a fox so he whoever he is maybe he is my friend he is as clever as a fox so we are comparing my friend with a fox their baby was as cute as a button their baby was as cute as a burden. So we are comparing the baby with the burden. Let's move on to the imaginary. It is the formation of mental images, figures of things, the author's use of description and words to create pictures in the reader's mind. So what do we call imagery? Imagery is the formation of mental images. You, When you read something, you start imagining pictures imagining the scenarios you see what's happening you know like it's you are there so the author's use of description and the words it creates pictures in the reader's mind if you are re reading a book you will see yourself as if you are there you will feel everything you will see it's happening whatever is happening is happening in front of you so for example juicy sweet soft dim dark aroma if the 
if the author is talking about the coffee the coffee the aroma of the black coffee was spread in the room so you will feel that aroma you know that sweet smell of her perfume you you would feel that you are smelling that sweet uh, uh, smell of that perfume the room was dim or the night was dark you would imagine it definitely when you are reading such um, descriptions such uh, um, words you imagine you you imagine the pictures in your mind so let's move on to the personification it is a thing an idea or an animal which is given which gives human attribution a thing an idea or animal is given human attribution so for example the sun is smiled at us so the sun can can you imagine sun is smiling to us no but it is personification you make you give this personification or an idea to, like it's it's a human uh, all the human attributes which human beings do sun cannot smile only human smiles only human can walk only human can shout only human can beg all those attributes attributes which are related to human beings are given to any animal or thing is called personification so the sun is smiled at us so this is here smiled is personification because we have given something which human beings usually do to a thing to to the thing yeah so the sun is smiled at us the wind shouted so how can you say the wind shouted wind doesn't shout but the night was so quiet we heard the wind shouted her flowers were begging for water so her flowers were so dry that they were begging for water so this is the personification you 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 start imagining like really the flowers were begging for water they were dried the the lady was not giving water to the flowers so this is called personification you put all the attribution which are related to human to the to the things or uh, to the animal so let's move on to the another um literary device which is repetition it is a literary device that repeats the same words phrases a few times to make an idea clearer for example stopping by woods on a snowy evening by emily dixon this is a very nice poem um some phrases uh, some stanzas some verses from uh, her poem where you can see like the um this literary device in which the same words have been repeated so you can see like here but i have promised to keep and miles to go before i sleep and miles to go before i sleep in these two uh, two verses two phrases this these two have been repeated again and again to make the idea clear let's move on to our end of the chapter end of the lesson and you are free as birds you can go and practice what are the literary devices what are uh, personification metaphor simile and repetition and tell me all about it in the comment section and if you want me to make another lesson related to literature i would love to make for you please like share and subscribe for more lessons and goodbye